Good morning. Okay, today's little project. This is a dryer, another fabulous street bounty find. Uh, I drive past a dryer and think, I don't see a dryer, I see a hundred bucks. Anyway, um, this is a Bomatic BD45kg, which tells you automatically it's a 4.5kg dryer. It's a little bit unusual in that it's really thin. They normally come out to about here. So this is a, um, here we go, there's a model number on the back there. BD45kg. And this one wasn't working. And I'll, it wasn't working because the fan belt was stuffed. I happen to keep these are two, a 270 mil diameter. Any generic fan belt that's 270 mil diameter will do. You don't need to buy a brand specific one. So that's a little tip for you. Anyway, when I replaced the fan belt, I could see that it was starting. It was trying to start, but it just wouldn't start. So I'll show you what I mean by that. And we'll start to do some diagnosis on start capacitor failures and when you have to replace them and how they test when they're not working properly. So just quickly, this is the replacement fan belt. As I said, 270 mil diameter. Any generic 270 mil belt will do. And you can see that as the motor turns, it goes into a ring gear or a, a ring pulley on the shaft and that turns the fan. Um, and it wouldn't start without that. And you shouldn't start it without a fan belt because Basically, if the thermistors don't, aren't working and they don't protect the start mechanism, it'll fail. So to get it on, you've got to undo basically these screws, these screws, and, you got to, and these screws at the top. And you've got to slip the fan belt over and then pop it on this pulley. It feels very tight, but once it's on, you can't quite play a tune on it, but uh, you can see it's reasonably tight. Now, here's our start capacitor down there. We'll have a bit more of a look at that in a second. So let's see if we can get this thing going. Just put it on cold, start. Can you hear that? It's, it's trying to turn, it's humming, but if I give it a bit of a spin at the back. Let's go around the back here. definitely spinning so it was trying to start mm, it was humming but just couldn't get away I was going to show you what it was like with some wet clothes some damp clothes in there but we don't need to do that because it's just it doesn't quite have the power to get it away so stop it we'll put it on a hot cycle just to prove the point oh and it just 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 gets away but when I first started that it just wasn't starting. So, now I'll throw some clothes in here just to throw a bit of extra load in and we'll see if it'll start. So, um, basically, if your start capacitor is failing, that's how you tell. Basically, your machine will hum, but it won't actually start spinning. And you can't give it a kick because the auto door lock will prevent you from opening the door. So that's, uh, it's inherent in the system design that you can't actually get into the drum and give it a hand spin to, to start the spin uh, if your start capacitor has failed because of this automatic door lock, which is doing its job. So none of this stuff is particularly damp, but nevertheless, it is a little bit of a load. There we go. So I don't know if you can hear it humming, but that tiny bit of extra load, which means that as the start capacitor is right now, which is showing round about one nanofarad, and it should be, I think, six nanofarads, uh, it just doesn't have quite the, capac uh, quite the capacitance the, the, to store enough charge to kick the motor to spin it. So let's replace it and see how we go. So I'll put that on, on hot, give it a start. Hum, 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 not doing anything. I'll just give it a, now that the case is off the back, and don't try to do this if you don't know what you're doing. There we go. No, it wasn't quite enough. There we go. So I just gave it a hand spin, and that was just enough to get the drum spinning. So I'm almost 100% certain that the start capacitor is the point of failure here. Always unplug things, always. 
Now if we go down here we can see, you might just be able to see, that capacitor down there is 6 microfarads. And you can see the voltage, should say 450 volts. I can't quite see that on the side there, but I know that it's definitely rated for the line voltage in Australia. So this one's a little bit tight to get to because this is a very, very compact machine. I'm going to replace it with one from another machine, which is slightly larger. This is eight microfarads, whereas the OEM one is six microfarads. So that slight 20%, 25% difference is basically irrelevant. If you have a much, much bigger start capacitor than the one that is fitted, it can overload the motor and overheat the motor because it can store too much start charge and give the motor too much of a bigger kick. So you do have to try and get them as close as, as specification as you can, but if it's not exact, don't panic. Now to get the old one out, it's a little bit fiddly this one because I said it's very, very tight in here. So I've just got a long handled Phillips head and I'm just slowly turning it to unscrew the holding screw and then I can get that capacitor free. And there we have it, six microfarad. There we go, 450 volts AC. So I'm not telling pork pies. So let's get this out and we'll test it on the bench so I can prove that this one has failed and then we'll replace it. Okay, so I've just tested this new one. It should be testing at eight microfarads. And you can see that 7870 nanofarads, which is basically 7.8 microfarads. So this one is bang on spec. So there you go, I've got this one to test and it's testing at 1024 nanofarads, which is one microfarad. So that's a fifth of what it should be. Definitely stuffed, definitely going in the bin. Let's put a little bit of fresh solder on that, mainly for the flux. I think in America they pronounce it SADA. I only got that from Big Bang Theory. So this is just a test and once it's tested, I'll redo all this all right sensational right i've just got that temporarily taped up and out of the way so let's pull this back on its feet and give it a kick in the guts right i've got power on start oh just like a ball one sensational i love it when a plan comes together i love it when a plan comes together Okay, we'll turn that off. Throw some pliers in, prove it wasn't a fluke. And start again. Unreal. So that's it. So that's how you diagnose if you've got a dryer and it hums and it's trying to start, but it just won't start it's going to be the start capacitor. So hopefully this helps you out. Start capacitors are available, eBay, all that sort of place for around about $12. Try and get the nanofarads of, uh, the, 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 it specifies, so replace like with like. Make sure the voltage specified on the capacitor is higher than your local line voltage in your country. So that's it. So you can replace a four with a six. You can replace a six with an eight, as I've just proven. And it'll work perfectly. It doesn't have to be exact. If you can get it exact, all the better, but don't be too concerned. But don't go lower, so don't replace an eight with a one microfarad, for example. All right, cheers guys. And again, you don't have to subscribe, I don't really care, but if you give me a like, it helps the algorithm and lets me produce a bit more content. All right, have fun.